Hey guys, it's Michael here. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the DJI Osmo Pro. The Osmo Pro offers a higher level of production value and one of the smallest handheld packages. It uses the same handle as other Osmo products, but utilizes the DJI X5 camera. The X5 camera features a 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor with 12.8 stops of dynamic range and is capable of video recording in 4K UHD up to 30 frames per second and 1080p HD up to 60 frames per second, as well as raw photos. With the larger sensor, the X5 camera has brought a more cinematic look to the Osmo form factor. Coupled with the DJI 15mm f1.7 lens, you can capture a much shallower depth of field than ever before. To start the setup, we're going to go over assembling the main parts. Our kit will come pre-assembled, but it's helpful to know if you need to pack light. There are four main pieces, the Osmo handle, the X5 camera, the X5 adapter, and the DJI 15mm lens. We begin with the Osmo handle. Located at the top is a lock ring. Make sure that is set to unlock, which has the white square. Take the X5 adapter and place it on top of the Osmo handle. Make sure you line up the white lines on the back with the line on the handle. Once in place, just twist the lock ring. We will then take the arm on the side and fold it down, then secure it with the screw. Next, we will attach the lens to the X5 camera. Remove both caps, and line up the red dot and rotate it until you hear it click into place. There is an additional lock ring located at the base of the lens. Rotate it counterclockwise to tighten it down. You will also want to make sure that the lens is set to autofocus and the aperture ring is set to A. This will allow us to control the aperture and focus electronically through the DJI GO app. Now we can attach the X5 camera. Once again, there's a lock ring at the front, so make sure it is set to unlock. Find it easiest to grab the camera by the base and line it up that way. Once in place, simply rotate the lock ring to lock it in place. You will then notice two mounting points on the left side of the handle. This is where we can attach the phone holder and the optional cheese plate with cold shoe mounts for accessories. To attach those, line up the mounting screw and twist the lock ring until it secures. A great feature, the two quarter 20 mounting points are both the standard quarter 20 thread, opening up even more options for accessories. This is also the easiest point to insert your media. The X5 camera records to micro SD cards. We include a 64 gig card in with our kit. If you are using any of your own micro SD cards, make sure that they are at least a class 10. On the underside of the camera, you will see a small cap with a picture of a micro SD. Pull that to remove the cover. You will then see a slot for the micro SD card. You will want the notched side of the card to be towards the USB port. That's the proper direction. And don't forget to close the cover once the card is in. The batteries are mounted in the bottom of the Osmo handle. To mount the battery, switch the lock on the battery door to open and the door will pop open. The battery mounts with the flat side towards the red locking switch. Also, make sure you leave the pull tab sticking out so that you can easily remove the battery. To remove the battery, simply press the red locking switch and the battery will pop out you will have an approximate runtime of 60 minutes per battery. At this point, if you do not already have the DJI GO app installed on your phone, you should pause the video and download it. It will be necessary to view and control the camera. Be aware that the app will require you to create an account, so make sure that you have this taken care of before you get to set. Now that you have the app installed and ready to go, we will mount our phone to the holder by hooking the corners and setting it in place. To boot up the Osmo, hold down the power button on the side. You will hear a beep when it boots on. We can now connect to the Osmo's Wi-Fi. On your phone, open up the Wi-Fi connections menu and you will see a Wi-Fi network called Osmo underscore and a series of numbers. Select the Osmo Wi-Fi and the default password will be 12341234. Your phone will likely warn you that you will not have an internet access, just hit OK. We won't need access to operate the camera. 
we will now open the DJI GO app. It should default to the Osmo Pro as it is connected, but if not, just scroll through the options until you find the Osmo. The camera button will now be blue, signifying you are connected. Click the blue button and you will pull up the camera view. The app is very easy to navigate, but it splits settings up into multiple menus that are not always the most intuitive. So we're going to take a slow look through where everything's located so that you're able to find it when you need it. We will start on the left hand side. At the top left, you will have a switch for photo and video mode. Simply tap to swap between the two. Below that, when in video mode, you will have a red record button. And when in photo mode, our shutter button will be white. You will also have a record button and a shutter button on the Osmo hand grip. In photo mode, you will also see an icon that resembles mountains. By tapping this icon, you can adjust how we are taking a photo, either as a single shot, multi-shot, or interval. Clicking each will bring up a sub-menu that will give you additional options. In single shot, you can choose to immediately take a picture when the shutter button is pressed, or to have a five or 10 second countdown. In multi-shot, you will have options for a three shot, five shot, and seven shot burst, or what is called auto exposure bracketing, or AEB for short. In AEB, the camera will take a picture and then take additional pictures at a lower exposure level and then a higher exposure level. You'll have an option of three shot or five shot burst in AEB. In three shot, you'll have your base image and then one lower exposed and one higher exposed copy of the same image. And with five shot, you will have two lower exposed and then two higher exposed. Auto bracketing is a great way to ensure you have a proper exposed image and wide exposure range once you get into post-production. In interval mode, you will be able to select either a three second, five second, 10 second, or 30 second interval between shots. Below the shutter button, you will see three lines with dots. This is where we can adjust our main camera settings for ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. You can choose between full auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, or full manual exposure. You will notice that as you change values here, the information at the top will adjust accordingly, so you're able to monitor your settings even with this menu closed. Below that, in the bottom left-hand corner, is an icon with a play symbol. This is used to switch to playback mode for reviewing footage quickly. Across the top, in addition to listing your camera settings, all the way on the left, you'll see either a green box or a yellow circle with a dot in the center. Tapping it will switch between the two. The yellow circle is for auto exposure and will be disabled while in manual exposure. Simply tap the area on screen you would like the camera to expose for and you'll see a large circle appear with exposure written below it. This is now where the camera is exposing for. This will be helpful when you are in areas with large differences in lighting so that you are able to make sure your subject or a specific area is properly exposed. The green box is for autofocus. Simply tap anywhere on the image to focus to that specific point. Do note that this is a single shot autofocus and will not continually track focus. If you need to keep focus on a specific subject, I recommend using manual focus. To swap to manual focus, simply tap where it lists AF slash MF and the current focus method is highlighted in blue. You will also know that you are in manual focus because a focus wheel will appear on the left side of the screen. You will see infinity on one side of the scale and a flower representing close focus on the other side of the scale. Simply scroll with your finger to adjust where you are focusing and the wheel will stop once you hit the stops on either end of the scale. The right side of the screen holds all of our recording and gimbal controls. Starting at the top, you will see a home that exits the camera to go back to DJI GO's main menu. If you accidentally hit the home button while recording, you will not interrupt the recording. So simply hit the blue camera button again and your camera view will pull back up. Below the home button, you will see a camera icon. This is where we can adjust our recording settings. When you click on it, a small window will open up with camera listed at the top. This menu scrolls and additional information is listed further down. At the top, you will see your video resolution. Tap and you will see all available video resolutions followed by their frame rate. 
The list also scrolls, so to see 1080 options, you'll want to scroll to the bottom. Next will be Photo Format. You can choose between RAW, JPEG, or JPEG and RAW, where it captures both simultaneously. When you are in photo mode, you will see the number of shots remaining on the card listed next to the battery life in the top info bar. That number auto adjusts as you change photo format. Color is where you can adjust the color or look settings for the flattest profile and the widest dynamic range. I recommend D-Log, although this will require you to spend time color grading in post to dial in the look. My two other favorites are D Cine Like, which gives you a flatter profile but maintains higher saturation than D-Log, so I find it faster to color grade, and Classic, which will give you slightly warmer with a slightly higher contrast than the standard look, and it's my go-to for footage that I won't have time to color grade. There are many different options, though, that each have their own creative looks, so test them all out and find the one that's best for your project. In addition to the color, you will also be able to adjust what is called style. Style offers you additional control over the sharpness, saturation, and contrast of the image. This is done in addition to the color profile you select so you can truly customize the look of your footage. Your options will be standard, scenery, and soft, which are presets as well as a custom where you can select the values for each setting up to plus or minus three. Below that will be white balance, where you have presets or you can select custom and select the exact Kelvin temperature you need. The grid and focus peaking are helpful tools for framing and manually pulling focus. The grid will offer you options for a rule of thirds grid with or without diagonals, as well as a center point option. These will be helpful when framing a shot or tracking a subject so that you can keep framing consistent. You have additional options for center point further down in the menu. There you will be able to adjust the look of the crosshairs and the color. Focus peaking will outline the in-focus areas of your image in red so that you are easily able to identify what is and isn't in focus. You will have three strength options of low, standard, and high. Further down, you will see a switch to turn on a histogram for monitoring exposure, and below that, mic control. The Osmo Pro features a built-in mic as well as a 3.5 millimeter line-in for use with external mics. That line-in can be found above the trigger on the Osmo handle. The internal mic can be used for reference audio, but I've found it to be lacking in quality, so I recommend using the small mushroom mic that we include in the kit. It'll give you clearer audio for reference without adding much weight to the rig. To adjust audio, open up the mic control settings. At the top of the menu, you'll have your mic gain settings. You can adjust the gain either by the plus and minus signs on either side or with the slider bar at the bottom. You can quickly reset the gain to 30 by hitting the default button. At the bottom, you'll see two switches. The first is labeled sound. This is where you can turn on or off sound recording. If sound is turned on, you will see a switch for inner mic. This will control if the internal mic is on or off. If you will be using an external audio source, I recommend turning the inner mic off. To monitor audio levels, you will see a level readout on the bottom of the screen. The bars fill up as the audio level increases, and the last bar will turn red when your audio is peaking. You will also see a small mic icon to the left of the bars. This tells you what mic you are using. When using an external mic, you will see EXT listed. The mic will be all white with no writing when you are using the inner mic, and it will be red with a dash through it when you are not recording audio. The reference guide section is for overlaying reference guides for aspect ratios other than 16 by 9. Presets for ratios are available at 239 to 1, 235 to 1, and 1.85 to 1. You will also have an option for custom where you can create your own ratios. Manual focus assist and autofocus assist are helpful options for run and gun work. When those are turned on, the image will zoom in approximately 1.5 times so you are able to more accurately find precise focus. The very bottom will be a calibration option. Our kit will come pre-calibrated, so you should not need to adjust this. But should you have trouble hitting infinity focus, you may need to calibrate the lens again. 
Should you need to calibrate the lens, simply hit the button and follow the on-screen instructions. For advanced camera control, hit the gear icon in the bottom right, and then camera. Here you can adjust the video format to either MP4 or MOV, as well as the video standard to NTSC or PAL. You will also see an option for video caption. By turning this on, the camera records GPS data as well as your camera's settings into a subtitle file that is recorded next to the main video file. I generally keep this turned off, but it can be helpful for logging footage after a shoot. Below that, you can adjust the aspect ratio for still images, either as 4.3 or 16 by 9. Time-lapse format will allow you to record time lapses as either video or still images and video simultaneously. Further down, you will see general. Here you can turn on overexposure warning, which will cover the overexposed areas in frame in zebras. You will also be able to hard reset the camera with the reset button at the bottom. To adjust how the gimbal will operate, navigate to the main camera view. Below the camera icon, you will see an icon resembling the X5 gimbal. This is where we can adjust how the gimbal operates. In general, there are three main ways to operate the gimbal. The first is with the gimbal reading your movement, so as you pan or tilt in a direction, the gimbal will remove the camera in response. This is the most basic way to operate the gimbal, and is very intuitive. You can adjust how the gimbal reads your movement in a few different ways. The easiest way is with scene mode. This allows you to choose from walk for general smooth b-roll and tracking shots, sport to keep fast moving subjects in frame, and wearable if you're attaching the Osmo to yourself. I generally choose to operate in walk mode so that I have a smooth, even movement, but I find sport to be helpful when I need to make fast pan or tilt movements. Below scene mode, you can turn on or off what is called pitch lock. Pitch lock alters your tilt motor so that it maintains a consistent horizon level. You will see that when pitch lock is turned off and I tilt the handle, the camera tilts with me but once I turn it on and tilt the camera, it remains at the same pitch. This way, when I am shooting, I don't have to worry about my frame drifting up or down in the middle of my shot. This will also make tracking shots significantly easier as your subject's eye levels won't shift as you track with them. I generally turn pitch lock off when I am capturing general B-roll and turn it on when I require more control over my framing. But what will work best is gonna be dependent on your shot. For even more fine-tuning control over the gimbal, hit the gear icon in the bottom right and go to Gimbal. The top will list out speed options for the camera movement. You can choose from Slow, Medium, Fast, Custom 1, or Custom 2. You will also be able to calibrate your horizon here, should it be necessary. You'll also see a Recenter button and a Selfie button. Those are quick ways to adjust the direction the gimbal is facing. Recenter will turn the camera back to the default position and can be done quickly by double tapping the trigger below the audio input. Selfie turns the camera 180 degrees to look at the operator. This can also be done quickly by triple tapping the trigger. Selfie mode may seem like it has few applications outside of vlogging, but I found it useful when I needed to shoot subjects behind me but still see where I'm walking, as you can easily shoot backwards over your shoulder that way. You'll also see an option for orientation lock. This is similar to pitch lock, but for all three motors. With this turned on, the camera's position is locked and will not move regardless of how you move the handle. You can either tap to turn orientation lock on, and the lock symbol will turn yellow, letting you know that it's turned on. Or you can hold down the trigger, and while the trigger is held, orientation lock is on, but as soon as you release it, it turns off. Note. If you turn orientation lock on from within the menu, you'll also have to turn it off in the menu before the trigger shortcut can be used. At the bottom is set gimbal attitude. In the menu, you can manually set the camera's position by inputting pitch and yaw information. The current pitch and yaw position will be listed at the top, and you can edit the degree by tapping the white box next to each axis. Pitch can be set between negative 90 and 30 degrees and yaw between negative 320 and 320 degrees. No, the app will not stop you from inputting values greater than each axis limit, but you will see the confirm button is grayed out and unable to be pressed. 
so if you're having trouble inputting values, double check that they fall within each limit. The second method of operation is with the joystick on the Osmo handle. Imagine that the joystick is the camera, so that when I push up, the camera tilts up, right, and the camera moves right, etc. The joystick will override any other gimbal settings, such as pitch lock or orientation lock. You will find additional controls for the joystick in the advanced control menu. Below the horizon calibration, we can adjust the joystick control direction from H slash V or free. H slash V is default and will not allow you to pan at the same time you are tilting. With free, you are able to tilt and pan at the same time. You will also see options to reverse the tilt and pan directions of the joystick. If you need the gimbal to return to default settings, simply hit reset and all gimbal settings will return to default. The third way to control the movement is on your phone with a touchscreen joystick. If you press and hold anywhere on your phone, you will feel it vibrate and a small white dot will appear. That represents the center of the joystick. Moving above or below the center will tilt up and down, and the same for left to right movement. The speed of the touchscreen joystick is dependent on how far you move from the white center dot. The further you move right, the faster you pan. I find I use this method the least, but it is really helpful if you are viewing your image away from the Osmo Pro and want to make an adjustment or you are unable to use the joystick on the handle. The last menu is under the gear icon and then general. Here we can adjust the Wi-Fi settings and the video cache. The cache is referring to proxy recordings that are done onto your mobile device. These are low quality reference files so that you can quickly view shots on your phone, but they shouldn't be used in place of the actual recording. Also, note that the proxy recordings are subject to the Wi-Fi signal and can often have interference and more noise than the internal recording. You can clear the cache by hitting delete and set it up to auto cleanup by hitting the switch at the bottom. Scroll down and you'll see the format SD card button. Hit format to wipe the micro SD. That's everything you need to get up and shooting with the Osmo Pro. If you guys have any other questions about the Osmo Pro or would like to rent our kit, just give us a call or visit us at magrents.com.